All right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's your brother, Noah. I hope that you guys are blessed in Jesus Christ's name. And today in this video, I'm going to be talking about a way that you can submit to God way more thoroughly. This revelation that I'm going to be talking about will not only help you submit to God, but also help you to do so in, in a way where it is genuine from the heart. You know, many times in our Christian walk, we might be tempted to just do something out of obligation, do something merely because we know it's the right thing to do, which don't get me wrong, you have to deny your flesh and do that sometimes. But it's really important to understand that when God commands us to do things, it's not because of an arbitrary reason. It's not because, you know, he just has this uh, hidden will that is aside from our interests, aside from what is good for us. Actually, the word of God says, if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. I believe that God actually commands us to do things because it's the best thing for us. This is really important to understand. You know, many times when you're convicted by God or God's leading you to give something up, you might be tempted to sit there and contemplate, oh, but man, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. This isn't going to be fun anymore or I'm not going to be able to hang out with this person anymore. But you need to take into consideration that your perception of the thing that's going to be enjoyable, the thing that's going to be good for you, the thing you're going to be missing out on is actually inferior. The perceived benefit of holding on to your ways, the perceived, you know, outcome that you desire, that you think is going to happen, you know, th you know, through holding on to your ways is actually inferior. The thing that God has for you behind obedience to him is actually better for you. And not just by God's standards, not just by God's desires, by yours as well too. I believe when our will comes into alignment with God's will, we actually are able to achieve that deep, genuine desire that we had in the first place, whether it be relationally, whether it be financially, spiritually, whatever have you, you know, you will actually obtain the thing that your heart was searching for deep down. But the devil tells you you're not going to be able to. The devil tells you it's going to be boring. It's going to be not enjoyable. It's not going to be the thing that you actually desired. You know, if you have to give up something that God is leading you to give up, let's say he's calling you to give up a friendship. The desired uh, thing that you are trying to attain from that friendship will actually be attained in the more fullness thereof, at least in the long term, when you obey God. In the moment, it might look like, oh man, I'm going to be lonely. I'm not going to have anyone to hang out with. But you have to think to yourself in the back of your mind that God is a good father, that God is actually going to bless you with the desires of your heart. Once again, as the word of God says, he's going to, you know, achieve that in your life. And it might not make sense. It might not look like it in the moment, but the thing that you're holding on to is actually prohibiting you from the thing that you're trying to achieve, the thing that you desire deep down in your heart. If you submit to God, you will actually find the fullness of that desire much more, even if you don't realize it in the moment, even if you don't realize what your desires actually are, even if you don't realize what you actually want. That's the case many times when we are, you know, holding on to something that is sinful. We don't know what it is we actually desire deep down in reality. We might not be able to discern the inner chambers of our heart. We don't actually know what we want. We need God to show us what we actually want in reality sometimes, or at least the fullness of that desire. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 9 says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So the scripture is literally saying here in Hebrews chapter 12, that God is chastising us 
for our profit. It's saying that our earthly fathers, our earthly dads chastened us for their profit, you know, for their reasons, right? But God is actually chastising us, convicting us, sanctifying us for our own profit, for our own benefit. Everything that God commands us to do, I truly believe, has our best intention in mind. The best outcome behind it is in mind when he commands us to do things. However, as the scripture says right here in Hebrews 12, it's not joyous, but rather grievous. So you may experience being grieved. You may experience being upset in the flesh with regards to some of the things that God leads you to do. But you need to remember in the back of your mind that even if I can't see it, this thing that God is commanding me to do is actually going to lead to the best possible outcome in reality. Jesus Christ said, which one of you fathers having children, if they ask you for a loaf of bread, a piece of bread, will you give them a serpent? None, obviously. How much more shall our heavenly father give good gifts unto those who ask? God gives us better gifts than what we even imagine, than what we even expect for. The thing that God has for you, if you walk in obedience to him, is better than you can even perceive, better than you can even expect. I'm not saying, you know, this in the sense of like the prosperity gospel that you're just going to have your Joel Osteen best life now, be rich, wealthy, and famous. That's not what I'm trying to communicate. Sometimes there might be material blessings. Many times there might be material blessings included in that. But nevertheless, my point is, you know, the end result that is achieved is exactly the thing that it's, it's personalized for you as well too, right? So we shouldn't envy sinners. You know, the word of God says in Psalm chapter 92, verse seven, when the wicked spring up as grass and all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. I believe the devil can actually bless people in some sense, you know, not an actual blessing, but can actually give them things for disobedience. Um, in Matthew chapter four, when Satan tried to offer Jesus the kingdoms of this world, I don't believe that was a fluke altogether. I don't believe that was a deceptive offer. Obviously it was deceptive in some sense, but I believe the devil actually possesses that ability to give riches, to give wealth, to give the kingdoms of this world, to give, you know, financial and material things unto people who are willing to, you know, blatantly live a demonic lifestyle, blatantly do things for the kingdom of darkness. So therefore, as I was alluding to, if you see sinners flourishing, don't envy it. It's not God who's blessing them in some sense, many times, and, and sometimes it could be, right? God uh, meets people where they're at. God shows his goodness to people. He, you know, before they're saved, he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. But if you see somebody prospering in a vain, sinful way, don't envy that because the thing that God has for you is better at the end of the day anyways. So when the scripture talks about understanding the precepts of the law, the precepts of the commandment that God gives us, it's realizing the intent behind that commandment. God doesn't just try to kill people's joy and kill people's fun. But once again, as I said earlier, the, the deep down heart motive that is trying to be fulfilled through something that is sinful or worldly is actually achieved in its complete fullness through obedience to God. It's just not pleasing to your flesh, obviously, right? So I want to encourage you guys in what Proverbs chapter 3 says, lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all of your ways, and he shall direct your path. And if you're ever tempted, as every person is, if you're ever tempted to think, man, it would really suck to, you know, not indulge in this thing right now. It would really be terrible to not be able to do what I want to do, you have to remind yourself, God's ways are higher. God's ways are better for me in every regard. You know, this is a big reason why God commands many things of us, actually, because he's a good father that's looking out for our benefit. Now, it's obviously in accordance with his will, but part of the reason of, of his will for us 
is actually for that, for us, you know, for our profit, as Hebrews chapter 12 says. And hopefully once you realize that, it can cause your heart to want to obey God that much more.